Although creepy clowns like Pennywise are terrifying, we know they are fictional. But what if I told you that one killer clown was as real as you and I, performing a whole array of tricks that were not intended for his audience? To many people, John Wayne Gacy was just the friendly man next door who loved to entertain young children. He often dressed up as his alter ego, Pogo the Clown, at parties that he hosted at his home for the entire neighborhood. Sounds like a regular Mr. Rogers, right? Well, not exactly. Welcome or welcome back to Twisted Minds. My name's James, and today we look into the case of John Wayne Gacy, a serial killer who would don the outfit and personality of a clown to perform unspeakable acts on young men. John Wayne Gacy was born on March 17, 1942, in Chicago, Illinois. Sadly, Gacy and his siblings grew up with an alcoholic father who would beat them with a razor strap every time he was too drunk. His mother also got this treatment, often being beaten when his tyrant of a father thought she had stepped out of line. Things weren't just bad at home for Gacy, as he was also an outcast at school, being unable to play with other children due to a congenital heart condition. Gacy Sr. saw this as a weakness, something for John to be ashamed of. John later realized that he was sexually attracted to men, something he struggled a lot coming to terms with, especially knowing what his father would do if he found out. As a teenager, he briefly worked as a mortuary janitor in Las Vegas, Nevada. After returning home, he graduated from Northwestern Business College and worked as a shoe salesman in Chicago, Illinois. Maybe this is where his love for theatrics began. They have a size 20 clown shoes section, right? In September 1964, Gacy married Marilyn Myers. Now part of the Myers family, Marilyn's father asked Gacy to manage three Kentucky Fried Chicken outlets. Although life seemed finger-licking good for Gacy, there was trouble in paradise, as Mr. Myers distrusted him. This was brought on by Gacy lying about his professional accomplishments, but who doesn't smudge a little on their resume? Gacy eventually became a self-made building contractor in the Chicago suburbs in the 1970s. It was during this time things were going great for Gacy, loved by clients and his community alike. One of the things that really made him popular, especially among children, was Gacy's alter ego. But I think we are getting a little ahead of ourselves, so let's send in the clown. John Wayne Gacy was a member of the Jolly Joker Clown Club in Chicago and often dressed up and performed as Pogo the Clown for children's parties, charity fundraisers, and other events. This is a detail you will want to remember later on in this video and erase by the end of it. Although Gacy seemed like a fun-loving goofball to many, he was hiding a darker side. In late 1968, Gacy was charged with the crime of sodomy for paying a 16-year-old boy to perform a sexual act and with hiring another teenager to beat up the 16-year-old he had abused. On the 2nd of December in 1968, Gacy was sentenced to 10 years in Iowa State Reformatory for Men. The very next day, his wife Marilyn filed for divorce, which was official on the 18th of September, 1969. Ironically, while in prison, Gacy treated other homosexual inmates badly, telling his friends that he was famed by an envious enemy. Bozo the Clown, maybe? After being released on parole in June 1970, Gacy returned to Chicago, where he worked as a chef. He bought a house at 8213 West Summerdale Avenue in Norwood Park an address that now lives in infamy. Here, Gacy became respected as the resident nice guy. Unbeknownst to them, however, he would cruise Chicago in the dead of night, looking for young males to pick up. Eventually, this led to him getting charges of disorderly conduct in February 1971, which were later dismissed, and charges of aggravated battery and disorderly conduct in June 1972, which never made it to trial. On the 1st of July 1972, Gacy married a divorced woman named Carol, who was unaware of his sexuality. Carol had children from a previous relationship, to whom Gacy was a good stepfather to, by all accounts. 
The family even held lavish theme parties and invited the entire neighborhood, as well as whatever political figures Gacy could persuade. On the 3rd of January, 1972, Gacy's behavior changed and his violent temperament, perhaps adopted from his father, got out of control. After luring a young man home for sex, Gacy stabbed him to death. This began a chain of murders, fueled by his twisted sexual fantasies. His construction company often lured young men eager for work, while at the same time, he would cruise gay bars to find young men. Once he persuaded them, he would take them home for sex. He would often drug his victims to make things easier, and more disturbingly, make them handcuff themselves as part of a magic trick. When they were helpless, he told them, the trick is, you need the key. According to the killer, most victims were strangled with a device Gacy called the rope trick. Yep, absolutely horrendous. In 1975, Gacy joined Chicago Democratic politics, becoming secretary treasurer for the Norwood Park Street Lighting Commission. With this new role, Gacy began making public appearances as Pogo the Clown and ran large public parades. He was even photographed with First Lady Rosalind Carter, President Jimmy Carter's wife. Gacy used his construction company to dispose of 30 bodies, burying them on his own land, especially in the crawl space beneath his house. Gacy would brush off complaints about an awful smell, blaming the crawl space's dampness. He must have had a way with words because convincing people that rotting corpses were just a bit of damp is no easy feat. It is believed that not all of Gacy's victims were buried at the house, with at least four bodies being dumped in the Des Plaines and Illinois rivers. Gacy may have even killed others during business trips, although that has never been proven. His second wife, Carol, though not knowing her husband was a killer, did know their marriage was on the rocks, finding signs of late night visits from young men, as well as finding sexual videos and photos of gay men inside the home. The marriage eventually ended in March 1976. Carol continued to visit John, accepting the fact that he was gay, but not knowing about the bodies buried beneath the house they once shared. It wasn't just Carol who was ignorant to Gacy's crimes, as the police didn't investigate the disappearances of two victims in 1975 and late 1976, which could have been tied to Gacy. With that being said, when Robert Peist, a 15-year-old boy from nearby Des Plaines, disappeared on the 11th of December, 1978, witnesses reported that he was last seen with John Wayne Gacy. After a lengthy investigation, police discovered several holes with human remains in the crawl space beneath the house. Caught red-handed, the killer clown confessed to the murders of about 30 people. At first, Gacy cooperated with the investigation, drawing a map of all the graves. Afterwards, however, he pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity, and even hinted that he had shared the house with others who may have killed a few of the victims. Hmm, sure, John. I'm sure everyone believed that one. After a gruesome and difficult trial, in March of 1980, the jury gave a verdict of guilty on all 30 accounts of murder, with 12 of them carrying the death sentence. Over the years, people have speculated that Gacy was responsible for far more people they found, with eight of his poor victims never being identified. Well, as Gacy learned firsthand, not everything can stay buried forever. In 2011, authorities exhumed the remains of the other seven victims buried without police knowing who they were. Within weeks, the sheriff's office announced they had identified one set of remains as William Bundy, a 19-year-old construction worker. In 2017, one of the unidentified men, known simply as victim number 24, was identified as 16-year-old James Jimmy Byron Hackinson. In 1976, Hackinson had left his home in St. Paul, Minnesota and traveled to Chicago to begin a new life in the city. On August 5th, he called his mother to let her know he had arrived safely, but shortly afterward, he had a run-in with a clown. In 1979, Hackinson's mother contacted the police to find out if her son was one of Gacy's victims. But she didn't have her son's dental records to help identify him as a victim. Sadly, 
Hackinson's mother died in early 2000s, and in 2017, other family members provided DNA samples that found him a match for victim number 24. The latest victim to be identified was revealed on October 25th of this year, 2021. Authorities in Illinois had managed to use specialized DNA techniques to identify Francis Wayne Alexander, a North Carolina man who moved to Chicago as another previously unknown victim. It is believed that Francis was killed somewhere between 1976 and early 1977. This, of course, has brought closure to a family who have been desperate for answers for a staggering 45 years. So we've talked about the past and murders of the infamous killer clown, but what about the place all of these unspeakable crimes took place? The house of John Wayne Gacy was located at 8213 West Summerdale Avenue in Norwood Park, close to Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. It wasn't just the neighbors who complained about the stink of the house, as family members also made comments. He would often explain it away as mold and dead rats. The house was a simple one-story ranch house in a middle-class neighborhood. Gacy had fashioned a trap door leading to a crawl space beneath the house, which made it a handy way to dispose of his victims' bodies. Others were buried in the backyard or dumped in the nearby De Plains Rivers, leaving no shortage of locations to hide the bodies. In 1978, with Gacy under arrest, the house was destroyed in an effort to find more evidence. A year later, the house and all structures on the property were demolished, with a new house eventually built on the land. In 1986, city officials changed the address from 8213 West Summerdale Avenue to 8215 in the hopes of erasing the bloody past of the land. Although the house has been occupied throughout the years, it always seems to end up empty. In October 2020, the house was up for sale again for nearly half a million dollars and even had its price slashed three times to attract new buyers. Although it's not the original house of horrors, is it really a shock that people don't want to live on the site that the remains of 30 young men were discovered? Gacy's trial began on February 6, 1980, with Gacy already confessing to all of his murders. The only thing left to do was to determine if he was insane. Gacy had told police that he had committed the murders while taken over by his alternate personality. Mental health professionals argued about Gacy's sanity, but it was the jury that finally found him guilty, establishing him as one of the most brutal serial killers in US history. He was eventually sentenced to 12 death sentences, as well as 21 life sentences. John Wayne Gacy was locked up at the Menard Correctional Center in Illinois for almost a decade and a half, appealing his sentence and giving a number of contradicting stories about his murders during interviews. Despite his best efforts, he was eventually given an execution date. On May 10, 1994, John Wayne Gacy was strapped to the bed in full view of witnesses and administered a fatal injection. Before that final moment, however, Gacy was given his last meal, which was a feast of 12 deep fried shrimp, french fries, a pound of strawberries, and a bucket of original recipe chicken from KFC. Yes, from the very same restaurant chain he managed for his father-in-law, Mr. Myers, 32 years previously. John Wayne Gacy is a serial killer that has gone down in infamy around the globe. A classic example of a seemingly nice guy with dark and heinous intentions that are fueled by lust and an unmerited hatred for his own sexual orientation. One of the workers involved in the demolition of John Wayne Gacy's house once said, if the devil's alive, he lived here. After hearing the story of the killer clown, can you disagree? Clowns hide behind a mask of drama, color, and humor, but masks can also hide deep secrets and the faces of unfathomable evil. Thanks for tuning in to Twisted Minds. That was the case of John Wayne Gacy. And why don't you go ahead and click on one of the two videos on your screen for another one of our videos.